I'm at the hotel here in Lekka. Show you a little more about this place. It's absolutely beautiful. Weather in the 70s. We'll have a low in the morning of 60. Rising to 76 with no chance of rain. So, wow. It is beautiful here. I've been in this area before, Lake Como and around. Actually, Lake Como is a little farther north, but never been in, in uh, Lekka. It is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Sailboats out. Bunch of little tiny black bugs. I hope they're not mosquitoes, but whatever they are, they're loving me like mosquitoes. Not itching yet, so maybe there's some sort of little gnat. Tomorrow we'll be touring Lekko and then the next day we go to Milan uh, and then we'll travel further north getting into the northern Dolomites where we'll see the Iceman Museum and continue on from there. Our trip ends October 18th in Paris so lots to see and do before then stay tuned and have a good night we have the lake we have lake okay so just some information about leko i mean we'll talk about leko on the way to go okay but just a couple of things the first thing is the bell tower okay so that's a bell tower that if you decide to do if you decide to follow me we'll climb Okay. It's going to be 409 nice. steps, exactly. It, it's one of the highest bell towers in Italy, yeah? because yes, later, if you want, we will tell you the whole story. But from here, I think you can see. Everyday life, a woman doing her shopping with the Tono European cards, right? So we're getting ready to go on a boat ride, so I'm just going to give you some snippets of that. It's windy this morning, as you can tell, the sea is rough and you have kites or first island in the water. But um, in the low 60s now, supposed to be in the mid 70s today, the sky is looking good, should be a wonderful day. Stay tuned. So it says, so I'm going to read it in Italian. I'm going to read it in Italian if that's okay. And then I'm going to give you some elements in English in order to understand. Even if, guys, you need to consider that this is all the Italian, okay? So it's not really the Italian that we use right now. We wouldn't talk like this anymore, right? But what it says is, Quel ramo del lago di Como che volge a mezzogiorno. Tra due catene non interrotte di monti, monti, montagne, mountains, in un aldirivieni di montagne e di mano in mano più allargato tra altri monti che si spiegano a uno a uno allo sguardo e che l'acqua riflette. This is the beginning of the beach road. Then what does it say? It says that branch, ramo in Italian is just like branch, which looks at mezzogiorno. Mezzogiorno in Italian means midday. You know midday, mm -hmm. but in Italian it doesn't refer only to time, it also refers to the south. So if we say mezzogiorno, midday, it means south, mm -hmm. because it looks at the south. Mm -hmm. Between two uninterrupted chains of mountains, and this is the reference. 
uh, in a continuous coming of mountains and then it gets bigger and there are this is a little bit difficult, okay? It means like the, basically like there is some room between the mountains that get wider. The view gets wider. Uh, one by one, the view reflects on water um, together with some uh, little uh, villages on the sides, on the lake sides, okay? Okay, we're coming to the bridge now, to the city center. Okay, so as the bridge is currently JFK. Interesting. The old bridge, which now is called Ponte Vecchio. Ponte Vecchio in Italian means Ponte, bridge, vecchio, old. Okay. I think if I were these two fishermen, I would be seasick. Coming into the city center now. So we'll walk around and eventually we'll go on the boat ride. Watch how the image changes as I walk along. That's cool. I hope I captured it. Could uh, get the toes in the water here. Is this beautiful or what? the bell tower. Haven't decided if I walk it or not. Um, I'm not concerned about the steps because you can stop along the way of course but I don't want that loud noise to my ears. Look at this folks. For all you mountain and lake lovers. I'm an ocean person, but I can certainly see the beauty of the lakes and the mountains. Gorgeous. Mm, a play area for the children. What a neat spot. Well, I'm like a kid myself when I'm on these trips. You've probably noticed. I just get excited about everything. <laughs> I love 
love the lighting here. Beautiful. It's fairly early in the day, it's about 9.30. Okay, getting ever closer to the bell tower. Should I do it? Or should I not? Stay tuned. Once again, it will be very difficult calling photographs and videos. I heard a gentleman, one of my fellow travelers, saying on another trip that he took 5,000 photographs. Oh, that was probably me back 10 years or so ago. I've gotten a little better. I only usually have about 1,500 now. And I call them out as I go along. So that helps. Oh, another beautiful snapshot here. As you may have realized, this is a very peaceful little town or city. Oh my goodness. I feel very safe walking around. And it's early in the morning yet, but really nice place. So many places in the world that are in chaos and disrupted and so forth. Nice to be in a peaceful, serene place. I'm walking along. Of course I keep my valuables close to me, right? I do that anywhere, even at home. But, uh, I don't feel threatened in any way, you know? And that's nice. Okay, I believe we're getting ready to uh, get on this boat, maybe. Okay, we're about to begin the boat ride. Time. <laughs> Fun watching people getting their photographs. Everyone having a good time.
everyone doing this. I hope you're having fun following along. Such a beautiful day. First stop. Whoa. Coming into the town where we'll uh, get off the boat. There's a word for that, but I can't think of it right now. Disembark. This is where we disembark or not. I don't think that's the name I heard. Okay, my patient viewers, I think we are now coming into the town where we will disembark. They're so important every day, but especially when you're traveling and you just want nice photographs and a nice visit without having to worry about it raining and you're slipping and falling and whatever. So, I'm very grateful for this weather. I'm very grateful just to be here, period. People are stepping in the water there. <laughs> I bet that water's a little nippy. Okay, maybe we'll have the name of the town here. Yes. I knew it started with an M. As I've said so many times before, I wish all of you could be here with me. It's such a beautiful world we live in. Oh, there's a duck. There's one, more than one duck. Uh, if you stay at home and you just listen to the local news or the international news, whatever, 
you can get a pretty negative, uh, pessimistic view of this world. But let me tell you, when you're out in it, you see the good, the common bonds that we all have. It's a good thing. And I hope I share that goodness when you are watching these videos. Other people read a lot, okay? But this is in general, it's a kind of destination of a, what do you call it, pilgrimage? In English? Pilgrimage. Some people here, they come because this is where Motobutsu is from. They just come here because they, it's like sense of belonging, you know? So yeah. Now, we walk. So I might add, this is a biker's gathering place. They uh, just had a uh, gathering of themselves here a week or so ago, the guide was telling us. And when I say bikers, I'm not talking about that. Bicyclists. I'm talking about motorcycles. This one's for you, Rudy. Okay, we're walking along the market area now. Beautiful flowers. <laughs> So this is a, a small town, about 10,000 live here. And it's kind of off the beaten path, not one of the touristy, touristy locations. So that's good. Calmer, quieter. Oh, look at this. Oh. Mm. Some of these nice warm clothes would feel good right now. It's a little chilly. Hasn't gotten into the 70s yet, I don't think. Oh, thank you. Thank you. See, the price is very reasonable for jeans. Well. For me, the most interesting part in the market is the one with food. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Shall we? Yeah, yeah. We're going to where the food is. <laughs> Everyone loves food. Oh my. Oh wow. But then, this for example, it's not regional special. This you find it everywhere in Italy. Do you know guys? Do you have it in the United States? Rotisserie well, chicken, yes. Oh yes. Pollo is chicken. Okay, and Aldo Spiero is one that one there. Okay. No matter where we are in the world, everyone loves food and everyone has their uh, different flavors, techniques for cooking, whatever. Okay, moving along here. Goodness. Expression. You know, now. Supposed to be. 
Pancetta, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's similar to bacon, but it's not exactly bacon. Okay. So, the pancetta, uh -huh. actually, guanciale, okay, guanciale, guanciale and pancetta are very similar. Guanciale is the one that we use for the carbonara. You know the carbonara pasta? Carbonara is a pasta from Rome. It's pasta from Rome, we cook it with eggs, so this sauce is like eggs, a little bit of black pepper and the guanciale okay. right before. The guanciale is similar to that, okay? okay? So it's, it's pretty fast. The brisano is exactly the opposite, this is very light. It's big but it's like, for example, when I was, in, when I was working in a club, when I was, a, when I was young, which I'm not anymore, when I was young, I was about 20, 23 years old, I used to work in a club. And there were the bodyguards, so the security, they, you know, they wanted to be very slim, let's say in fit. They came to the club with this, I remember. And during the night, because they needed proteins, they needed energy, but no fat. We just had a tasting of the Val Fortone. Oh, very good, my customized cheese. We have... Davide, this guy is called Davide, uh, and I was talking to him, I was asking, can I show to my travelers this, because this is exactly what we were talking about before, you see, Bresaula, Bresaula è qui, dov'è, questa è Bresaula, giusto? Bresaula, you see, that's the one we were talking about, Okay. this is beef, it's light, no fat, no fat, exactly. Then you have this one here, which is completely different. Questa qua è la pancetta pepata, giusto? Oh, oh, so this one, yes, this is the <laughs> pancet, pancetta pepata, because pepe in Italian means black pepper. Oh, you see okay. little pieces? Yeah. yeah. And then you have the la coppa, 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 coppa. Is this also beef? Questo è anche manzo? No, this is pork. That's what I thought. It looked like a pork. Because no, this is beef. This is pork. Okay. This is coppa. You see here, Britain, coppa? Uh -huh. Questo è il manzo sempre. Maiale. Maiale, pork. Yeah. Okay. okay, also pork. But you see? Yeah, also a little bit fatty. Fat. But this is very tasty. Yeah. Yeah. This is very good. Because coppa. Where is it? Questo qua? Okay, so this is... <laughs> I don't know if these shoes are any good or not, but they're certainly reasonably priced. And our guide was just telling us about another cooking class he's arranging for us. We couldn't believe the price, 35 euros each. What a deal. Uh, we will not be making the pasta from scratch, but we'll be assisting the lady as she does the dish. Uh, and it has the cheese that we just tasted, that wonderful cheese. I forget the name of it. All the wine you want. Uh, car comes in to get us from the hotel. Then we have a short walk up to her home. Um, sounds like quite a deal. Stay tuned for that one. I 
I certainly have a little bit of everything here. Yeah, oh yeah, there, there can be completely different types of polenta. Yeah. Sometimes we even do polenta with, you know, with bakke. Wow, well, we can mix through. Yeah. Oh. It's like a toaster. A mixer. A giant mixer. Hmm. I should take a picture. Not in our market, but we've seen it in other countries. Right. Yeah, not in our market. So in the United States, you don't find animals that say like this. No. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> hey guys! Hi! How are you? I see one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. You, you're blocking it. <laughs> so I'm taking a break to just sit here and be in the moment. Hmm. There's a small plant. If I understood our guide Sylvia yesterday when we were coming into Laco, the airport is on the top of the mountain here somewhere. pre-Alps. We'll be going deeper into the Alps to uh, reach a more northerly point for the Dolomites. Okay, stay tuned. I uh, will make up my mind later whether I'm going to do the bell tower walk. The view is supposed to really be beautiful, so we'll see. I still worry about my ears and all that noise.